Hello and thank you for taking a moment to listen to God's word today. Please prepare your heart as you listen. We hope and pray that this sermon will be a great blessing to you. Thank you very much pastor and thank you very much Ajay for that warm introduction. I don't deserve that. Uh you know, but God's good. You know, truly God's good and it's a joy for me to be with all of you this morning. Uh indeed, you know, uh when you look at things all around us, it still amazes me that you know how God is so faithful in each of our lives and you know and i just want to thank god for this privilege and the opportunity that we have to gather this way to worship him and to listen to his word before we listen to god's word shall we just pause for a moment of prayer father even right now lord we just want to come at this time i just pray oh god that you would cover this time under your precious blood i pray oh god that you would remove every distraction and i just pray oh god that our focus would only be on you and i just pray oh god that you would hide me behind your cross it's not about me it's all about you lord and i just pray oh god that you would speak to us lord we are eager to hear from you and i pray oh god that you would open our hearts and our eyes and our minds to receive you this morning in jesus name we pray amen i've um, taken a passage which is very familiar which is 1 kings chapter 17 and um, you know it's a story that all of us would have learned it from sunday school it's heard it all along and for no better choice i've called it a loving god life of elijah i'm not covering the entire uh, life of elijah but i'm just trying to you know uh, just from this chapter 17 i'm just trying to glean a couple of points for us which might be a repetition might be something but somehow you know god laid it on my heart that i should share this with you this morning and uh, god reconfirmed it twice over the last couple of days and i i believe that this is god's word for us this morning before i get into the message i just want to give you a background of elijah you know elijah was also called the prophet of fire okay um nothing is known about his background um till you know 1 kings chapter 17 and it starts off with you know here is a man you know it starts off like that but actually he should have been around there for some time because you know if you really look at it in 1 kings 18 uh, 17 you know uh, ahab looks at him and he says you are a troublemaker okay so which means you know he should have been earlier uh, something should have happened so that's why he's called him a troublemaker or a troubler he also had something which was very mysterious you know that is he used to disappear in the sense you know um, there are a couple of verses 1 kings 18:10 and 1 kings 18:12 if you look at it you know uh, obadiah meets elijah and then you know he says you know elijah says tell the king and he says how can i tell the king because he searched for you all over and we have not found you and he says if i decide to go and then you suddenly disappear what happens you know what will the king do to me you know so it looks like you know uh, elijah had a habit of disappearing and he's one of the most prominent among the prophets and for sure there's a lot of similarity between uh, elijah and john the baptist i'm not going to get into it but you know if you can take your bibles and do a comparative study between uh, elijah and john the baptist you will find that there are quite a few from the clothes that they wore to you know confronting kings okay confronting rulers whatever so there are many things that you can look at so you know maybe once you have time whenever you have just have a look at that as well but this morning you know i just want to look at four simple aspects from this particular chapter uh 1 kings chapter 17 and the first one that i want you to look at is god's provision is always adequate god's provision is always adequate you know we are in a time when we know we don't know what's happening around us i know in my own office last year i had to let go of quite a few people because of the pandemic there might be some of you who would have lost your jobs some of you who would have had a you know salary cut some of you who are in business not knowing what's going to happen i know for sure so many people are struggling and you know this is real but this morning i want to tell you our god's provision is adequate 
you know, it says, Now Elijah the Tishbite from Tishbe of the settlers in Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord, the God of Israel, lives whom I serve, there will be neither dew nor rain in the next few years except at my word. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah, Leave here, turn eastward and hide in the Kereth Ravine east of Jordan. Just look at this. Here is a prophet, God's telling him, go and tell there is going to be no rain. If you and I were in this place, what would you be and I be thinking of? What happens to me? Lord, if there's going to be no rain, it's going to be famine. What's going to happen to me? But then, you know, Elijah knew his God. Elijah knew his God. And so when the word of the Lord came, leave here, turn eastward, and hide in Kereth Raven, he just obeyed. He knew his God is able to provide. Come what may, whatever be the situation, he knew his God can provide, will provide. He's more than adequate. He knew that. And so he obeys them and goes to a place and hides in a place called Kereth Ravine. And we know the story, how God provided but the point that I want to tell you here is Elijah knew his God. He knew his God is able. Do you know your God? Our God is a God who owns a cattle on a thousand hill. You know, there is nothing that he doesn't own. Every animal of the forest is mine and the cattle on a thousand hill. That's God's word. If he owns a cattle on a thousand hill, won't he take care of you? He would. Whatever be your situation, I don't know what you're going through. I find a lot of, you know, um, foreigners here on uh, worshipping here. You have left your home. You're here coming here to study or to work. You might be worried. But I want to tell you, a God is able to meet all your needs. Whatever your needs are, God is able to meet all your needs. You know, there was a man uh, in the U.S. And uh, he had a large piece of land. But somehow, you know, his business went into debt. And he did not know what to do. The banks were after him. The banks were asking him to pay up the money or if they would take over the property and all that he has. At that given point in time, uh, you know, there came an oil company and uh, said, can we, you know, uh, hire your piece of land? This man thought to himself, there's nothing for me to lose. You know, I, I'm anyway going to give this up over to the bank. What's the point in me holding on to it? I might as well give it to the bank, you know, to this company so that they can do what they want. And so he signs an agreement with the oil company. The oil company starts, you know, digging. And they hit a gold mine. They hit an oil patch. And tons and tons of oils are coming out. And now this man becomes a millionaire. My question to all of us is, when did this man become a millionaire? When he gave the land to the oil company? Or when the oil company dug and hit the oil point. When did he become a millionaire? Actually, he was a millionaire right at the time when he bought the land. It's just that he did not know there is a source of oil in that place. It's the same with us. Do we know our God? If you knew your God, you would know he's more than adequate to provide for your needs. Whatever your needs be. This morning. Whatever you are going through. I want to encourage you this morning. And to tell you. A God is able to meet every need of yours. It could be a financial need. It could be a spiritual need. It could be a physical need. It could be a healing that you are looking forward to. I don't know what your needs are. It could be an emotional need. Maybe you lost someone and you're grieving. But I want to tell you, if you know this God, you don't have to worry because he's adequate. 
And Elijah knew that. He knew when God told him there's going to be famine, he knew his God is more than adequate to take care of him. How he would, he didn't know at that time. But then he knew his God is able to take care of him. And then, you know, it's not just this. Our God is able to take care of our spiritual needs as well. You know, in Ephesians 1, 3, it says, Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Every spiritual blessing. You know, so even this morning, if you're crying out to God and saying, Lord, I want this. And I'm sure God is able to give you every spiritual blessing. Because he's a good God. He will not withhold anything from his children. If you ask according to his will. You know, God will not meet our wants. But our God will meet our needs. For sure. He knows our needs. He meet our needs. He may not meet our wants. Very often we go to God with our wants and not our needs. And that's the problem. A God is more than adequate to meet every need of yours. Whatever is your need. This morning, I want to encourage you. He's able to meet. I heard the story and I, it stayed with me. You know, a man wanted to buy a Rolls Royce. So he decided to do some research as to which model he wants to buy. So he did a research. And he found, you know, this is the one that he wanted to buy. And he picked up all the questions that he wanted to ask the, you know, car uh, dealer. For. And so he went to the car dealer and he started asking him one question after another. He almost had all his questions answered. He was convinced except for one question. He asked the car sales guy there, what is the HP of the car? The sales guy was amused. He did not know. He searched the catalogs. He searched all his files. He could not find it. Okay, this is a story which is a little old, outdated. So you got to you know, understand. So this salesman sent a message to the factory asking them that I've got a you know, customer here. He's asking, what is the HP of this car? And promptly, the reply comes back saying, adequate. You know, in a Rolls Royce, the HP doesn't matter. You know, really doesn't matter in a Rolls Royce. The car that you want to buy. We've got a God who owns a cattle on a thousand hill. A God who created this entire universe and all that is in it. Won't he take care of us? He will. The only thing is, you and I, Need to know him. So my first challenge to you this morning is, do you know him? It's one thing to know about him. It's another to know him. I can know a lot about a lot of things. But do I know him as the Lord of my life? Do you know him as the Lord of your life? Elijah knew him. He knew his God. And so he knew he's more than adequate to take care of his needs. And so this morning, I want to encourage you, if you don't know him, know him today. All that you got to do is call upon him. He's faithful. He will answer. He's a God who will come into your life. He'll change you. He did that when I was in college. He will do it in your life as well. Maybe if some, there's someone who's moved away from God. If you're here sitting and listening, I want to encourage you, get back to him. In a time like this, the only rock is Jesus. The only unchanging person is Jesus. You can trust him with your life, with everything. Because he's a God who's trustworthy. He's an amazing God. He's been with me these years. He's never let me down. There are times when I have, but not once has he let me down. That's a God whom we worship this morning. He's a God who's more than adequate. The second one is a God has got ways which are mysterious. Just imagine this. He goes and hides 
in Kirith Ravine, who takes care of him? He goes there and hides near the Jordan. Well, there is water there. But who takes care of him? There's a raven that comes and treats him. Just look at it. You know, a crow, a bigger version of a crow or a, you know, a different version of a crow, a raven, comes in its beak, gives him food every day. And then there's a creek that's there from which he drinks water. You know, our God is a God who is able to meet our needs in mysterious ways. There are times when we put God into a jacket and we expect God to do it that way. But I want to encourage you this morning. Our God knows how to meet your needs and he can do it in mysterious ways. He used a raven to take care of Elijah when he was hiding in Kerith Ravine. The water dried up. What else can he do now? It's now no water there. But then, you know, the God tells him, go into the city and whom does he ask him to meet? You will see a, a widow. Just think about it. Not a rich man. Not, you know, someone who's got just a widow. And so he goes and meets a widow. And just look at that. And the widow is there picking up twigs and she's going to make, going to cook a meal and Elijah says, you know, give me water first. And then he says, as she's going to go and get a water, she says, no, give me bread as well. To which the widow turns around and looks at him and says, sir, I've only got this much of flour. And I'm going to make this into one bread. I'm going to eat. I'm going to give my son something. And then we're going to die because that's all that we have. And Elijah says, make and give me first. But just look at it. God takes Elijah to a widow who's got just the last meal. And how God mysteriously takes care of Elijah through that widow. So this morning I want to tell you, don't put God into a jacket or into a fixed mold. God can meet your needs in spite of whatever you're going through. You know, there's uh, again a story that's been told of. I like to tell stories, so you you listen to a few of them right now. Okay, there's a story of, uh, you know, um, a friend of Martin Luther. His name was John Brenz. There was an emperor called Charles who lived at that time who did not like uh, John Brenz. And so he wanted to kill him. So he sent a cavalry to, you know, uh, go and catch them. So John Brenz heard about this. And so he ran away from his place. He went into a town nearby. And he did not know what to do. He found a hayloft. And he went and hid himself in the hayloft. With just one loaf of bread and maybe some water with him. How much would one loaf of bread do for a man? But that's all he had. After a while, the one loaf of bread was over. But still, the people were searching for him. And he heard the people walking around. And he was laying on the hay loft. Every day, there used to be a chicken that would come to the hay loft, lay an egg. And normally, I'm not too sure these days, I'm not too sure if you have seen how, you know, when a hen lays an egg, what it would do. After it lays an egg, it will make a noise saying that it's laid an egg. I've had chicken at home. I have hens at home. So I know what it does. It will make that noise. It will cackle. You know, as soon as it lays its egg, you know, it will cackle. Saying, it's laid an egg. You can go and pick that egg up. But, you know, this particular hen, every day it used to go, lay an egg, not cackle. And so, John Prince used to take that egg and eat it. 14 days, he lived that way. God provided him through that hen. 
And then on the 15th day, the hymn didn't land up. And here was John Prince asking, Lord, I had this one source, this hen that used to come and lay an egg. Now so what happened? There's no hen. I've got no food to eat. At that time, you know, he heard the people outside saying, the people who are searching the cavalry have the cavalry people have left. They moved on. You know, that's the God. He could come off from his hayloft and enjoy his meal. A God who meets our needs in mysterious ways. You know, look at uh, Jesus when he was, you know, uh, John 6 or 5, you know, feeding of the 5,000. There were so many people, 5,000 men. So if you add the women and children, I don't know what the number would be. Just to take a wild guess, maybe 20,000 people. But with our God, everything is possible. He's more than adequate. Just five loaves of bread and two fish was enough to take care of them. You know, just think about it. How our God meets the needs in mysterious way on that mountain when there is no village close by, nothing. God is able to take care of the needs. You know, he knows what you're going through. Just provide, just trust God. He will provide in ways which you think, you know, you may not even understand the way God does it. God is able to do it through, you know, a different source. But God will never fail you. Just remember that. He will provide through another source. But God will never fail you. That's the God whom we worship this morning. So even this morning, as you are, I want to first tell you, he's more than adequate. Second, he does, his ways are mysterious. Look through the entire Bible. His ways are mysterious. When Joseph was sold, what did the brothers think? But look at it. At the end, it was Joseph who took care of them. Just imagine. Just God's ways. How mysterious it can be. You know, they think that they've killed him, they've you know sold him, whatever. And then God's got a sense of timing and a sense of way by which he does it. What an amazing God we have. His ways are mysterious. The third thing that I want to share with you is God sees our priorities, our obedience. You know, when God tells, uh, oh, go and make this bread and you will have enough. Your jar will not run dry. This lady could have questioned that. You know, this widow could have said, how is it possible? All that I have is just a little bit of flour and an oil to just make one bread. If I were to go and give it for, to this man, what happens to me and my son? We ourselves thought that this is the last meal. But then just look at her. You know, she just says, she just goes, does what Elijah asks her to do. Makes one, comes and gives it to Elijah, goes back, puts her hand into the jar, and lo and behold, there's flour. There's a flour. He takes, makes one, gives it to her son, puts her hand in, picks up, there's more flour, makes for herself. I'm not too sure how many months and years. But God ensured that the flour never ran dry till the rain came. But the key was not about, you know, that, but it's about that widow obeying or setting her priorities right. It's easy for us, you know, to do the right things when there is enough for all. But this is not a good test of our priorities. 
it's easy to do the right thing when there's enough for all but this is not a good test of our priorities or our obedience the real test is our true priorities become apparent when we are forced to make a sacrificial choice you know our true priorities become apparent when we are forced to make a sacrificial choice that's when you know god sees us god knows where our priorities are is wilson willing to let go or is he willing to hold on to what he thinks and that's why you know in uh, 1 samuel 15 22 it says no to obey is better than sacrifice to heed is better than the fat of rams you know a god does not delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the lord to obey is better than sacrifice and to heed is better than the fat of rams where is your priority where is my priority are we willing to obey god when god says do it are you and i willing to obey him and say yes lord i don't understand the situations around me but since you are telling me i will do it just try it out just try it out i have never seen anyone who's done what god has asked them to do go without meeting god meeting the needs and i want to encourage you this morning you know give to the lord give to the lord i know you are going through tough times i know all of us are going through tough times don't stop giving to the lord the temptation for most people is when we go through tough times is to cut down your giving to the lord and then to say you know god understands my challenge to you this morning is why don't you test this god and see just obey god don't stop giving i want to tell you this as a testimony not to boast not to you know take any credit like everyone else you know all of us i had a salary cut as well okay not a not a good one but a big one close to 35% of my salary they said is off from you know they announced it in uh may but they said it's from effective april 2020 that was last year but i decided in my heart to say lord i'm not going to stop giving because my salary is down i'm going to give what i continue to give and more as well because i knew god would take care of me and i want to tell you for these last 12 months we've not gone dry God's taken care of us. He's provided for us month on month. And I've been able to give more to God's kingdom even through this year. And the greatest testimony of all is in August when people were losing job, God added one more department to you. I was earlier all India customer service alone. And then in August they gave me an additional responsibility and they said i will handle the entire sales you know of this particular business electro mechanical which is one of the largest business in blue star so today i handle almost 50% of my company's business and more than 50% of my company's profitability 75% of my company's profitability it's not me it's god it's a god whom we have and that's why i want to tell you this morning you know a god is adequate a god is a god who provides mysteriously but you got to obey him you got to obey him you got you have your priorities right if you were to put your trust in him i want to tell you he will never let you down you know he's a god who keeps his promises if there's a promise that god's given you i want to tell you he's a god who keeps his promises again i we stand my wife and i stand as a testimony 
I've shared this last time when I was there in your church for that packed meeting. But I want to share it again just to encourage all of you. If you're down and if God's promised you and you're wondering, Lord, what's happening to this promise? It's been so delayed. I want to tell you, God's timing is perfect. Lena and I were married for almost nine years. We never had a child. You know, but God had promised us that he would give us. We went to many doctors in the city of Chennai. All the best doctors whom we could go, we went to. We did all the treatment that was possible. We, in fact, went to CMC Velour, the best hospital that was available, the best treatment that was available. We traveled, you know, to Velour week on week. And we did all the treatment that they told us to do. Still nothing happened. One day, you know, we decided and we told the Lord, Lord, we are tired of this. If you promised, you are able to do it. We just going to trust you. We stopped everything. And lo and behold, within three months, Lena was pregnant. We have a son, Caleb. Well, when we came there, he was 13 years old. He's going to be 16 this year. He's 15 now. So, you know, so that's how faithful God is. You know, is that a promise that God's given you? Hold on to it. Hold on to it. He will not let you down. You know, if you obey him, I want to tell you, he will take care of your needs, whatever be it. If God tells you to do something, do it. I just like to tell you to give to the Lord because, you know, I somehow feel, you know, we as Christians need to keep giving. You know, God's kept us so that we can give so that others can be blessed. It's not for me. What he's blessed me with is so that I can bless others. You know, I'm sure all of you know Deuteronomy chapter 28. You know how many verses are there for the blessings? There are about 14 verses. Go back and have a look at Deuteronomy chapter 28. There are 14 verses which talks about the blessing. And then from verse 15 onwards, I think it goes on to verse 68. Almost five times more, 4.8 times more are curses for disobedience. So just be careful. Trust God. Obey Him. You know, have your priorities right. Just look to God. He will take care of your need. When our priorities are God, God takes care of the rest. Whatever be it, God will take care. But just the important thing is, your priorities need to be right. And the last one, a God who answers. A God who answers. What does he answer? He answers prayers. You know, uh, you know the story. He was eating and staying in that house. And all of a sudden, the widow's son falls sick. And then he dies. And then she comes up and tells Elijah, why did you do this? You know, have you come into my house to remind me of all my sins and kill my son? And then you know what? What does Elijah do? Elijah says, give me your son, Elijah replied. He took him from her arms, carried him to the upper room where he was staying and laid him on his bed. And then what did he do? Then he cried out to the Lord, Lord, my God, have you brought tragedy even on this widow I'm staying with by causing her son to die? Where did he go to? As soon as trouble came, where did he go to? The source of all answers. God. Where do we run to when we come across trouble? Where do I run to when we come across when I come across trouble? I run to people. Can I run to this man of God? Can I run to that man of God and get prayed over? Can I go to my friend and ask him for help? Who's the right contact who will be able to meet this need of mine? 
whom should I, you know, in my human wisdom, I start strategizing, okay, this is the way I need to do it. This is the way I need to approach. But look at Elijah. When a problem is there, the first thing that he does, he goes to the source, to the God who is able to meet. A God who is able to answer our prayers. And in James chapter 5, it says, you know, uh, verse 16 and 17, it says, Therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. And our righteousness is not because you and I are righteous, but because the God whom we worship is righteous. We stand complete in his righteousness. And so we have the freedom and the authority to approach the Lord and ask him. Boldly, we can ask him. Because you and I are his children. And it says, no, a prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Elijah, verse 17, it says, Elijah was a man like us. He prayed there would be no rain and there was no rain for three years. He prayed again and there was rain. Elijah was a human being just as much as we are. He earnestly prayed and it rained. Are we seeking God earnestly? What was our prayer life? Do we run to God first thing? Or we do we look around for people? The key is we need to go to the source. You know, there was, uh, you know, this is again a story. Uh, there was this little, there was this young man who was sitting on a bench in a park. Okay, I'm running short of time, so I'll keep it quick. Okay, uh, there was this young man who was, you know, uh, sitting on a bench. And um, he was, you know, murmuring and muttering because he was really terribly distressed. And just then a little young boy walked past him and he looked at this young man, you know, worried, you know, talking and, you know, almost literally crying out. So he looked at this young man and he asked him, what is it? And this, young, and this young man told this little boy, son, my brother is going to be hanged tomorrow. I will need to meet Abraham Lincoln because only he can pardon me. And this little boy looks at this young man and he says, sir, why don't you come along with me? And so he you know, takes this young man, walks him into White House. And this man is surprised. Through every security, he's just able to walk through and he goes, and he's just wondering, how is it possible? How can I get into, you know, meeting Abraham Lincoln? But the boy just walked him through and brought him in front of Lincoln. You know who that boy was? Was the son of Abraham Lincoln. It's the same. We have Jesus. When you have Jesus, why do you need to worry? You can go to him with boldness, with confidence. And you can be sure that he will answer your prayers. He will take care of your needs. He will answer. I want to assure you this morning, our God is a God who answers prayers. Whatever be your situation, whatever be it, he will answer your prayer. He will take care of your needs. I just want to, you know, uh, close with one more story before which, you know, I just want to read what Ian Bounds uh, has said. What the church needs today is not more missionary or better missionary, not new organization or more noble methods, but men whom the Holy Spirit can use Men of prayer, men mighty in prayer. You know, what? not just the church, what the world needs today is not more missionary or better missionary or no new organization or novel methods, but men whom the Holy Spirit can use. Men of prayer, men mighty 
You know, God can use each of us. But you and I need to spend time with Jesus. We need to seek Him. That's why, you know, Matthew 6, 32, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. Seek God. Seek Him. God will take care of the rest. George Muller just did that. All of you, I'm sure, know about George Muller. If you don't, please go and read his autobiography. It's a great uh, autobiography. It's, you know, I think it's important for all of us to read some of these great men and women of God. George Muller had an orphanage and he used to, you know, uh, take care of these children. A lot of young children in his orphanage. And then, you know, one evening, he sat on the table, all the children sat around him, and there was no food. The children looked up at George Muller and he said, Sir, there is no food on the table. And George Muller knew, yes, there was no food. But then George Muller, you know, uh, went on his, you know, as usual, he used to pray before a meal. So he, you know, bent down, closed his eyes, and he told the Lord, Lord, I've been here doing your work. You know all that I've done for you, all that I've been doing for you. You know these children, they need food for this evening. I thank you because you are able to provide and take care of them. He said, Amen. He closed his eyes, he opened his eyes. There was no food on the table, but there was a knock on the door. He went and opened the door and when he opened the door, there was a baker who was to bake down the street who came to him and he said, Sir, I baked a lot of breads this morning. These were not sold. And something prompted me to come and give this bread to you. And here, this is bread. That night, God provided for the children through that baker down the street just because of George Mumula making a simple prayer. He went to God. He knew his source. He didn't go to the baker. He didn't go to the neighbor. He didn't go to the rich man. He went to the God, his source. So when you are in trouble, where are you going to? Are you going to the source? Or are you going around? This morning, I want to encourage you. Find a time and place today where you can pour out your heart to God. Pray for those needs that have a strong grip on your spirit. Pray for the souls that are perishing without knowing Jesus. In this pandemic, I just wonder how many people are going to hell without knowing Jesus. What are you and I doing? Are we sharing the love of Jesus with our neighbors, with our friends? It's important. Go to God and ask for lives. Go to God and what, whatever your needs are. If your needs are in accordance to God's will, I want to tell you, God will answer. God would do it. You know, I want to close, but I also want to close with a little story. Uh, you know, I had one more story which I'm not going to tell you, but I'm going to tell this little story because, you know, I'm running short of time. And I know that all of you are busy as well. You have other things to do. But I think I'll tell the story just to tell you how good God can be. You know, there was this little boy who went with his mother to a grocery store. And after his mother bought everything that she needed to, she came to the grocery counter and she wanted to pay the bill. And so uh, he went to the counter and she was standing at the counter when the, you know, the man at the counter who was collecting the money looked at this uh, young lady and she said, lady, can I give your son some candy? The mother said, yes, why not? And so the uh, storekeeper took a box of candy and sent, you know, gave it to the little boy and said, son, take as much as you want from this box. But this little boy refused. And then you know he, the man said, no, you can ask your mom. Your mom said, okay, you can please go ahead and take as much as you want. So the little boy said, no, I don't want. And so this man said, no, no, why? 
Then the little boy said, no, so why don't you take and give me? And so the man put his hands in, picked up and gave it. The little boy was very happy. He took it, went back into the car. As they were driving along, this mother was a little curious. She looked at the little boy and she asked him, son, why is it that, you know, uh, when that man told you to take that you didn't take, but when he gave it, you accepted it. To which the little boy had a good answer. He said, Ma, my hands are small. His hands are big. When he gives, he'll give me more. When I take, it'll be little. You know, the hand of God is big. Our hands of God is big. Where are we going to? Go to the hand. That can give you. I saw Pastor Ellis and others say, we love stories. And so I'll finish with the story. I promise you, I'm not going to tell you anything more, but I, but I promise you, I'll finish with this story. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because I love stories too. You know, I, it makes a big, deep impression in my life. And that's why, you know, I, I normally tell stories when I share God's word, because, you know, if there's something that you can take out of the story, that's the reason why. And this is a story, and I want to close with that, and I want to challenge all of you with this story. There was this art collector who used to collect art. He had a huge collection of art. And one day, you know, uh, just before he died, his son passed away. And then a few years later, this art collector also passed away. And so he, you know, uh, he passed away. They buried him, and then they took his will. And, you know, in the will, he had said that this needs to be auctioned. So they go to an auction house and then they announce that there's going to be an auction. So there was an auction that was called for. Over a thousand people gathered into that auction hall with all the paintings of various great artists, which he had collected, was all over the place. And, you know, they were all assembled there. And then the auctioner comes in, bangs the gravel, and he says the auction is open. And then he says... Here is the first art piece. And he goes and picks an art piece. And this is not an art piece that anyone would buy. It was a portrait sketch. Didn't look good at all. So, you know, no one was interested in that portrait sketch. So, you know, they just were waiting for this guy. They were getting restless. What a useless portrait you picked up to sell us a first item for such beautiful pictures. And you picked this up. But, you know, after some time, they were all very getting fidgeted. There was an old man who was walking right from the back. The auctioneer knew who this old man was. He was the servant of this art collector. This old man walked up in front, put his hand into his pocket, picked up whatever he had, and he told the auctioneer, this is the price that I can pay for this portrait. The auctioner picked it up and he asked the others, is there a bit higher than this? And all of them are saying, no, please move on. The other bits that we want to ask for, this is no good. So the auctioner banged the gravel again and he said, it's sold. It's sold. So the portrait picture was given. Now everyone was sitting up, you know, okay, now is the time. All the beautiful pictures that are there is going to come up for auction. We're going to bid and we're going to you know, take back home beautiful collection. When the auctioner came back, banged the gravel again, and he said, auction over. They were all surprised. What is this? We came in to buy these beautiful pictures, and you're saying the auction is over. To which the auctioner said, the man in his will wrote, the person who buys the painting done by my son gets all that is there in this place. And that's what Jesus did for us on the cross at Calvary. He paid it all. He paid it all. There's nothing that you and I need to do now. You just got to hold on to him. You just got to cling on to him. He's more than able. He's more than able. Would you just cling on to Jesus today? Don't let go of him. Whatever be the situation around you, I don't know what you're going through. But I want to encourage you, brother, sister, this morning, hold on to Jesus. He's paid it all. He's done it all for you and for me. You and I don't have to worry. 
because he holds our future. Our future is secure in him. Don't fear. He's able. There are four things that I shared with you this morning. I will close with those four. You know, our God's provision is always adequate. He is more than able. God's ways are mysterious. God sees our priorities. Put him first. Put him first. Obey him. And our God is the source of all resources. He is able to meet every need of yours. Go to him. Don't go anywhere else. Go to Jesus. Go to Jesus. Don't go looking around for people. Go to him. He's paid it all. He's done it all. Just go to him. Shall we just pray? Father, we just thank you for your word this morning. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to me and to us. I just pray, oh God, that we would just depend on you. You are such a loving God. I want to thank you, Lord, for the life of Elijah and for the lessons that we learned this morning. I just pray, oh God, that we would just put our trust in you and you alone. If there's someone here this morning who hasn't put his trust in you, I just pray, oh God, that you would enter into their hearts even as they give their lives to Jesus. Even this morning, I just want to pause for a moment. If there's someone who wants to give your life to Jesus, would you make this a time in which you talk to him and you tell him, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take control of my life, Lord. I need you. I need you. Thank you, Lord, for this time. Thank you, Lord, for this church. I want to thank you, Lord, for Pastor Sam and for everyone who's on this call. I just pray, oh God, that you would meet every one of our needs, Lord, because you are able. You're more than able, Lord. We love you, Lord. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I hope you were blessed by the sermon. Please share it with someone else who you think can also be blessed through this. If you would like to support our ministry financially, you can do so at kingscitychurch.org forward slash give. And we will see you next week with a brand new sermon. God bless.